Okay, so uh, we've been talking about virtual networking and virtual switches. Uh, one of the things you can do on these virtual switches is set a, a variety of network policies. The three big categories here are security policy, traffic shaping policy, and NIC teaming policy. We talked about NIC teaming in a previous video. Um, so let's talk about security policy. Um, now, one of the other things you can do, you can create uh, virtual switches. You can also create virtual port groups, almost like VLANs. Um, the fun thing about these, um, with, with, uh, with these security policies, traffic shaping policies, and NIC teaming policies, you can set a policy at the standard switch level and at the port group level. And if you've done that, the port group level policy will override the switch uh, level policy. Um, we can set some exceptions in security policy. The three big ones are promiscuous mode, MAC address changes, and forged transmits. Promiscuous mode, as the name would suggest, will allow uh, a NIC or, or, or switch port in that mode to, to uh, accommodate a NIC, with a network interf a virtual NIC, which is also in promiscuous mode. This could be very, very useful for listening in on a monitoring port or feeding traffic to a network intrusion detection or network intrusion um, prevention system or even a VM which is running a which uh, a VM which you know to be uh, and have authorized to be running say um, a, 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 a port a, a traffic analyzer a, a, a port snip a, a packet sniffer like TCP dump or Wireshark MAC address changes and forged transmits will allow um, the system to change the incoming and outgoing um, MAC address uh, forged transmits are outgoing, MAC address changes are incoming. This allows um, the system to deal with the fact that uh, you're, you have a, a limited number of physical ports with, um, with um, MAC addresses of their own, talking potentially to a, a great many uh, virtual NICs with virtual MACs of their own. And so the, the, the switch policies can allow, it can accept or reject these to, to translate, as it were, uh, at layer two. It's like, it's almost like network address translation at layer two. Um, you can either allow things, you can, dis, you can disallow these things to, to enforce your security policy or allow them if you need to specifically permit certain kinds of traffic, say for the, in the first case, the, the promiscuous mode, um, for the sake of running um, a, a VM with, um, uh, with, uh, with, a packet, with, a, with a packet sniffer, a protocol analyzer in it, or running a virtual NIDS IPS appliance, that kind of thing. Um, we can also have traffic shaping policy. This will allow us to do things like um, support, uh, provide the same sorts of things that you would do with, say, quality of service and class of service in in a, in a standard networking device at layer two, layer three. Everything from making sure your voice and video traffic goes out at the right speed. Um, you can also do things that make sure that that one virtual NIC can't saturate the physical link using things like traffic shaping on outbound port traffic. Now, there's two concepts here. Uh, uh, traffic policing and traffic shaping. Traffic policing is incoming. And say, if you get too much traffic coming in at once, you just drop the excess on the floor. Traffic shaping, however, uh, will allow you to take outbound traffic and smooth it out because our network traffic is just a little bit bursty, as in you have bursts of activity, then idleness and then bursts of activity and then idleness. What traffic shaping allows us to do is flatten that so that um, if you've got uh, a burst of traffic which which would sac saturate your link, you can buffer some of that traffic, wait for a down moment, then push it through. And on the whole, this really won't discombobulate your, your traffic all that much. And of course, if you've got traffic like VOIP, um, real-time voice and video that has to go out now, that's going to be going out in small, uh, steadily in smaller chunks anyway, uh, going back to the kinds of QoS things we might uh, talk about and say in the routers or enterprise networks course. So our three 
th three things, three uh, metrics uh, or controls that we can talk about in terms of uh, traffic shaping, um, the parameters rather, are average bandwidth, peak bandwidth, and burst size. So your peak bandwidth is as much as you can contain, uh, you can accommodate. Your average bandwidth is normal. Your burst size is how much of a burst you can allow at one time. So for example, if you um, if you have a bunch of uh, if you have a bandwidth spike, um, you can allow that for for a short time, and then close it down on the basis of that burst size. And then after it's gone down to the average for a while and kept average, then that will kind of open that gate again, as it were, to allow another burst. Um, if a burst bonus is available, it might accept that soup that Uber burst of traffic. Um, but still, there's this there's this control mechanism under the hood to make sure that you don't permanently saturate that link with with one burst after another. Frankly, if you've got traffic burst after burst after burst, that tells you that um, you are not managing your traffic effectively. That you might actually need NIC teaming, which is the next thing we'll talk about. NIC teaming allows us to determine how network traffic is distributed across physical adapters. The key word here is the physical. Um, you may have a VM, uh, because depending on what it's doing, with multiple virtual NICs, uh, say, in going out into the production side of things. Uh, that, is, that is to say, when I say production side in this case, I mean uh, client faces, facing, customer facing. Um, what we're talking about here is load balancing, failover, that kind of thing, for the physical NICs on uh, the physical hardware supporting all these VMs. Now, if you're talking about a server-grade uh, grade platform, you might actually be talking about, about a multi-port NIC. So, for example, going back to um, room 20, room 220, um, if you were to go in there, um, of course, we can't right now because of COVID, but um, if you were to go in there and look at those uh, rack mount servers, you would notice, hey, there's four ports in a row, four, four network interfaces in a row. It looks like a little bitty switch. It's not a little bitty switch. Um, it's a, it is a, a network interface card with four different NICs on it, each with its own IP address, sorry, each with its own uh, um, uh, MAC address, its own little controller, etc. Um, now, this gives us load balancing and failover and things like that. Um, so uh, def our default NIC teaming policies are going to be set um, for the entire standard switch, but they can be overridden at the port group level. Um, so if you know that a certain NIC uh, needs, a certain VM might need access to more than one physical NIC, you might put it in a port group with that kind of control. Um, now, let's see. Um, and the, you, when you see when you look at the policies uh, for any given port, you'll see what is inherited at the switch layer. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about um, is working with our virtual machines. So, thanks for watching, and we'll be right back.